the numbers have been done on bi-directional charging. So that means you being able to use your electric car battery pack to power your house. The average electric car battery is the equivalent of around about four or five Tesla power walls. So, I mean, the average EV could easily power a house. Now, of course, you're not gonna use your EV to power your house all the time because you're gonna be driving it sometimes, but most people have two cars and one of those cars sits at home you know, most of the time. So bi-directional charging does make sense. A lot of people want it. A lot of people want it now, but no manufacturers are really doing them en masse. And the ones that are like the Nissan Leaf, well, that's not really a car that many people want. And many people would be that confident that the battery in the Nissan Leaf would last a long time. That said, manufacturers are planning for bi-directional charging. Tesla says they will have EVs next year in 2025 with bi-directional charging. Now, analysts are saying that if manufacturers make bi-directional charging a, a big thing, it would save more than $23 billion a year and basically eliminate enormous amounts of carbon emissions. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I'm just about to take delivery of an XPeng G6. Yes, like all other cars, it, or nearly all the cars, it doesn't technically have bi-directional charging, but you can actually buy, there's a thing on Amazon you can buy, it's about $1,000, and it essentially enables your car to charge your house. But of course, how much power you can put out depends on your car, how much power your car can actually you know, send out of that battery. So the XPeng G6, I believe is about six kilowatts. Some cars have less than that, some cars have more. In theory, bi-directional charging is therefore possible, but the Amazon device, it's not exactly legal. If you did have a fire at your house, I don't know if your insurance would cover you. That's the one problem there. Bi-directional chargers only cost 100 euros more than a conventional EV charger, and that would pay for itself within a month. Now, storing renewable energy in electric vehicle batteries instead of stationary energy facilities like power walls or massive, massive commercial scale batteries would help the European Union save $107 billion every year over 10 years. That's according to a European Federation for Transport and Environment Study. This is just for Europe, by the way, not the whole world. If the intricacies are worked out, EVs could become the fourth largest electricity supplier in the European Union by 2040. So analysts expect this to happen. Analysts believe that EVs in future will, will be powering people's houses. A lot of experts are saying this is just inevitable, especially now that um, we know most EVs come with lithium ion phosphate batteries. We know that they last for longer than the life of the car. So why not use it to back up and power your house? To meet net zero goals, countless countries in the European Union and outside of Europe, like Australia, California, and China, they're building some of the biggest batteries in the world, and they're powering those with solar panels and wind energy. But at this point in time, still literally hundreds of billions of dollars of electricity are being wasted every year because that electricity can't be used, and so it just gets kind of curtailed or just destroyed, essentially. So these batteries are being built, but still there's not enough of them. The intermittent nature of power sources like solar and wind means that using energy storage solution is, well, um, the best way to you know, make solar panels and wind really work for us so we're not wasting this energy. EVs, which are a cr critical component of the clean energy transition, can serve as a decentralized energy storage system, says Interesting Engineering, by storing excess energy in their batteries and feeding it back into the grid when demand is high. So what you would probably do right in this scenario is store some of the energy from your solar system in your car battery during the day, and then send some of that energy out into the grid or use it in your own house between six to 10 p.m. That's when electricity is expensive in most grids around the world. Enabling this functionality in EVs would help the EU save hundreds of billions of euros while helping EV owners to massively save electricity, um, massively save money on their electricity bills. With the rise in EV adoption worldwide, bidirectional charging where the EV supplies energy to a household or to the grid is reaching a critical point. And a lot of manufacturers are planning on releasing this feature in their EVs over the next few years. 
A large fleet of EVs in a country or region like Europe can store excess energy generated in renewable facilities daily and feed it back to the grid when demand increases. Now, the theory here is that it wouldn't just be people who have their own solar systems on their roofs, but the theory would be that the grid, you'd be taking electricity out of the grid. Sometimes electricity prices are actually negative on the wholesale market. So consumers would sign up to being under something like Amber. That's where you can actually trade electricity on the wholesale market. They would actually take electricity from the grid during the during, during the middle of the day when there's too much solar and potentially also sometimes too much wind energy. And then they would basically store that energy in their cars or, or battery packs and then send that energy back into the grid when it's needed between 6 to 10 p.m. The study by TNE said this approach could help the EU save 23.4 billion euros a year by 2040, with that number continuing to grow as more and more EVs join the grid. The study further estimates that this can help achieve an 8% reduction in the costs of running, running the energy infrastructure in the EU, help the EU to close down all its fossil fuel power plants, and save 106.5 billion euros between 2030 and 2040. Now, of course, that number would obviously increase the more EVs are on the network. With the vehicle to grid system, the EU could improve its solar energy capacity by another 40% storing the excess generated energy in batteries. EVs could help meet 9% of the European Union's energy demand, making it the fourth largest electricity supplier without investing a single dollar in storage capacity. And it's really realistically, Europe doesn't have to invest anything in order to have 10% of all of its energy coming from batteries. Um, it's basically free energy essentially they're saying they don't even need to they don't even need to generate any more electricity from solar or from solar or wind in order to add 10 percent of electricity back into the grid it's simply uh, using what's already there so these numbers are actually not really accurate because by the time 2040 comes along there'll be a lot more solar and wind in the grid what that would mean is in theory that nine percent could even be something like 15 percent because there'll be a lot more extra energy being generated now a lot more be a lot more houses also with solar panel on their roof because the cost of solar continues to come down. That means more and more people getting solar, more and more people buying EVs. Really this 9% figure could end up being something like 20 to 30%. We really don't know the numbers because it depends on how many people buy EVs and how many of these EVs actually have the vehicle to grid capacity. How would EV owners benefit? Well, using bidirectional chargers could help EV owners massively reduce their annual electricity bills in fact, they say by 52%. These savings are subject, of course, to location, the vehicle's battery size, whether the EV owner's house has solar panels. But really, the truth is that if you have an electric car, right, which has vehicle to grid capacity, uh, if, you're, if you've got solar panels as well, there's no reason to suggest you should have to pay a single dollar for your electricity. In fact, you should be making money from the grid, assuming your state, your city enables you to profit from that. And many places do, many don't though, unfortunately. When these conditions are met, an EV owner could save more than a thousand euros per year in charging costs while also improving the lifespan of their battery packs. Contrary to commonly observed concerns about constant charging and discharging, this approach actually helps the battery pack retain an optimal state of charge and improves its lifetime by as much as 9%. So basically, they're looking at the studies of how long how EV batteries work, how they're optimized. They're saying, actually, this would extend EV battery life by 9%. That's, that's staggering. That's not a number I expected. Since bidirectional charges only cost around 100 euros, which is 106 US dollars, more than regular EV charges, the EU can reap these massive benefits um, basically for free. The cost of the charger will be offset within a few months or probably less than that. But EV makers must ensure their chargers are interoperable and support vehicle to grid technology. And that's the big bottleneck here. EV manufacturers haven't really, they've been a bit reluctant to enable vehicle to grid. Vehicle to grid can only take off if we ensure all EVs can work with all chargers, said Fabian Sperker, vehicles policy manager at TNE. Lawmakers can unlock the potential of this technology by deciding the EU standards for bidirectional charging. This will be a win for consumers, the environment and progress towards the EU's climate and energy goals. I personally think it should be mandated. I think 
in, in a, a free market, if, okay, if there's no incentives at all for buying, e, for buying EVs, if the grid is fully renewable, then okay, don't, don't mandate it. But if the grid is not renewable, if the grid is you know, using fossil fuels, and then in that case, I think it would make logical sense to mandate EV manufacturers have the vehicle to grid functionality on their cars, especially if they're using lithium ion phosphate batteries. It just doesn't make sense not to have this feature. I don't understand why they wouldn't. It really is simple. When I say simple, we do know BYD Addo 3s, like BYD EVs, Tesla EVs, they already have this functionality built in. There's, there's um, a company in Europe that have proved that this is the case. Now, it's just not accessible. But when you, if you can access it and you get an engineer to actually show you how to get to it, they, these EVs can already be used for, for grid purposes. So manufacturers just have to basically turn this on. I don't think it's that complicated and I do think it should be mandated. But anyway, that's my opinion. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching.